What are ghosts? Some of the very first stories about ghosts told by human beings were shared at local gatherings in the nearest cemetery. It is said that the minerals in the soil in which have decomposed from the corpse will produce ions in the air and thereby reacting with the gases in our atmosphere. Some say that they were old tales to help pass the time of hard-working monks in the 14th century. Or some even say that there's just simply a way of our loved ones leaving their marks to remind us that they are still in our presence. There are many conspiracies surrounding the field of the paranormal, and that is why we are here to find out. Ghosts are seen in many forms. The most common are called orbs, sphere-shaped entities that move mischievously in and around haunted areas. They are believed to be just a sample of a human spirit. Others say that they are a gateway to another dimension. Ectoplasmic smoke, a way of an entity leaving its scent for other beings to remember them. Or most interestingly, full form, where a spirit will show itself in a full-scale shape with the detail and characteristic of the sadly departed. just as red dots, which are said to contain a high magnetic field, explaining why ghosts may carry an electric charge. They are said to appear in photographs and to flicker when seen with a human eye or on film. Not far from the most haunted building in Britain, Chingle Hall, there's this old um, hospital called Whittingham Hospital, and um, it was for mental patients, some people call it a lunatic asylum, but yes, a couple of months ago, me, my friend Daniel, and a couple of friends went there to, um, to film him because of the as asbestos and that we had to wear these gas masks. So when we went in the, we, we found a way into the building, and we looked around and we found um, hats, uh, some um, old newspapers, and we had a look around and everything has been left there, like the, uh, the medicine bottles, the x-rays, um, the, all the uh, medical equipment, you name it. And when we were in there, because I'm, Daniel thinks I'm good at this sort of stuff, he asked me to do like a blessing to see if any spirits wanted to show themselves on film, so, um, like, we t of course took pictures, we filmed, and funny enough, when we came to viewing the footage, in a couple of pictures you could actually see like this red dot in the corners when you zoom in, and you could see some red dots in the video, and, um, and, and we couldn't explain what it was because it was on film, and so, so it couldn't have been just like a, a lighting mistake, and there's also um, rumors about the patients being tortured, like uh, pulled by their hair, it is not a surprise to many that Whittingham became so haunted, for its many rumors of its patients that were tortured to the very core of the human mind. Some were burned, strangled, stabbed, and even electrocuted. Perhaps they roam the old building reading their documents and looking for answers. Two priests were murdered for owing money to the very chancellor of the old hall, and in result were brutally stabbed in the old music room. The bloodstains still exist to this day.
In 1937, a woman known as the White Lady was, in short time, to be wed to a fine fellow. Unfortunately, she had an affair a few months earlier, and things did not flow as they seemed to one another. They had a huge argument within the town court, so sadly, she took her own life. Um, I was telling Tony about the, apparently the, the house is haunted by this banister doll, um, or it's called the banister hall doll, and that if you say her name three times, she's supposed to like wrap you up or, and beat you with chains and etc. So um, Tony started daring me to, well, why don't we stop and go out and, and see what happens? And I was up for it, and I decided to say, the banister hall doll three times and then I started hearing chains and some weird noises and it really freaked me out because Tony heard it too and I thought at first it was him but it wasn't he was really scared and from the corner of my eye I saw like this shadow of what looked like a little girl or, or something and making these weird sounds and um, by that time, we just ran and, and... And now to the very and deepest valve within the heart of the paranormal. We take you to the most haunted property in England, Chingle Hall, and share some of people's rememberal stories. In 2001, a 14-year-old man and his father go to film Chingle Hall not knowing what may be unearthed. Strange things begin to take place. After about half an hour of being in the hall's presence, a strange being in a black cloak appeared before them, and then suddenly vanished. time uh, I was invited by a lady that I knew who wrote uh, for the owners of Chingle Hall and we sat in the kitchen and had a cup of tea and we were talking and then um, I was asked because of uh, it was a psychic thing really to go into the house walk around and pinpoint any particular places of interest um, I, I pinpointed without going into great depth both downstairs and upstairs uh, all the places I mentioned when we went back to sit in the kitchen, areas have great significance within Chingle Hall, which is a particularly beautiful place. My friends and I in the 1980s were on the top of um, Scarborough Castle in Yorkshire. We'd been to Oliver's Mount road races, the motorcycle races, and we decided quite clearly we were going to um, sleep up there on the castle grounds. Um, somebody made a comment about a figure that hadn't been there before that just appeared in the middle of this wide open grass. So all our attention was drawn to it. I was dressed in what you can only see is cavalier style clothes, big hat, like a plume. Uh, it was dark grey, light grey um, and black at some points and um, the image of this this figure, which was moving around, it, it seemed to float. It didn't seem to have any feet. But as we went through the gap in the wall, the wall was higher there. As we got through, it had literally vanished. And there isn't a person in the war in the world that could literally have um, walked away or even ran at high speed. They would have had to have dropped through a hole in the ground, and there wasn't one. 
a visit to Pendle Hill, of which we've got incredible interest in what they call witch country. The Pendle Forest, that region, and holds a great interest. And I'd been there for quite some time, filming, doing various bits of work, and I'd had a visit to a village called Gisborne, which is just on the Yorkshire border on the other side from this side of Lancashire. Uh, the place um, where there's a gravestone that was anonymously put in the ground there within the church. Two black cats appeared uh, in my garden. One came first and then shortly afterwards followed by the second one. The most beautiful black cats and they just didn't really want to go away and being a lover of animals basically we um, we took them in they stuck around for quite a long time and then um, eventually they just went Antique dealer Jerry Smith has collected antiques for over 30 years, some of many significance in their shapes and sizes, until one day of search in the world's biggest library, the internet, really caught her eye, a clown named Vincent. It was 4.30 p.m and I put Vincent in the back room where all the other antiques go. At 2.30 a.m. to inspect the doll for its material qualities. But I stopped in my tracks when I noticed that Vincent had moved five feet to the other chair. When I inspected him, I noticed that his clothes were shifted. He had dust on his clothes. And I have never cleaned that room. And most interestingly, he, he had worn soles on his shoes. So the question is, was this coincidence or something paranormal? Last night I locked Vincent in a cupboard just before I went to bed. At about 2.18 a.m. my dog was barking at the cupboard where Vincent was. Out of all the years I've spent researching, taking pics, videos, I didn't quite experience anything like this. I looked at eBay because of my fascination of the experience I had had with Vincent. So I scrolled eBay for any dolls that may happen to be the same or similar to Vincent. I cl clicked through at least 30 pages. Just when I was about to give up, I stopped dead in my tracks. And to my amazement, there was a doll that looked identical to Vincent, except for a few small details. This doll had different clothing, 
different style of hair and colour and different makeup. Right away I got my credit card out to purchase him. The other doll arrived. He was in pristine condition. But the question was, was he connected to any paranormal activity? I set it recording one night next to the doll overnight to say if I could strike lucky. I took Vincent to the computer and pulled up the page where the doll was being advertised. I set up an EVP and pressed record. On recording I asked him a few questions, the first being Do you know him? And the second being, look familiar? A voice on the tape clearly said. <laughs> That's why I left it to my husband to do the technical side of the investigation. Joey and myself have been doing EVP for years and decided to see whether the EVPs of Vincent were genuine or if it's just somebody having a laugh. So we took an EVP that was what we can make out to be a little girl. The EVP was recorded when we were looking through a cemetery and by listening to it over and over again we believed that it says. I have two programs for analysing this sort of sound so we took our standard program Audacity as well as a cool edit pro and loaded the waveform to the girl saying hello and loaded a file of myself also saying hello on the left side of the screen we have our level of decibels and our frequency level as you can see here the average hertz of a human voice is about 137 and when we compare it to the voice of this entity saying hello the scale of the of the voice's depth is about 12 would you believe it is impossible for any human being to produce a frequency this low. The only life form we know of that's capable of hearing a frequency this low is a dog or a cat. This probably explains why a home containing paranormal activity may have a strange behaviour from their pets, such as barking or hissing. So the question is, if a human being wasn't making this sound, what was? As a result, the story has become more commercialised and people worldwide have expanded the the so known hobby by placing webcams in various places and hoping to capture something interesting. The image is and refreshes within 30 to 60 seconds before a new one is captured. have been typed and submitted. The process of EVP was used. It stands for Electronic Voice Phenomena. Static within the fibers of the cassette tape to capture such sounds. Back in the 1920s, a famous bird watcher was, was in his local field looking for any interesting new birds to record, jotting down their voices and the variety in their sounds. He was listening to the voices carefully through his headphones.
Victorian or modern people. This is when EVP was discovered. His name is Reverend Drayton Thomas. Many other methods have been used to record such entities, some of which being using a television to capture the very faces of the departed. Normal housing equipment such as Polaroid cameras, video cameras, are used to capture them. astounded by this talent as to its accuracy. Dowsing rods, used by various people and carried across fields, hold parallel to the ground, uncrossed, or one method not mentioned in your normal gossip and not suggested in your average board game developed many years ago and is known as the Ouija board. Sometimes the cursor takes a few minutes to move, or just seconds. Sometimes the board can talk nonsense, or make perfect and astonishing sense. <laughs> 